So one of the best and simplest techniques that you can use to train your mind during everyday activities is called overriding impulse. And the way that I'll describe this is to point out that any time that your mind is really jumpy, it's it's wandering around, it can't focus on one thing at a time, maybe you're on the basketball court and you're overthinking every single thing that happens, that act of the mind kind of bouncing around is, in a word, impulse. It's an impulse of the mind to follow every little, uh, well, impulse or train of thought, or um, you could look at it even if you're, the mind sort of is like, a child in a grocery store who is with their parent and they're pulling every single thing off the shelf impulsively wanting, uh, you know, I, I want this cereal or I want this candy, I want this chocolate bar and they're showing it to their parents and their parents are putting it back on the shelf and saying, no, we can't do that. But the child is sort of like that impulsive monkey mind bouncing from thing to thing to thing and wanting everything it sees. Well, our minds often behave that way. Um, and one of the, and in a word, what I'm, what I'm pointing out here is that that jumpiness is impulse. And so overriding impulse is the act of overriding consciously, not following impulses that come up during the day. And one way to really train yourself to do this is to actually, when you feel an impulse come up, one of the most common ones is to reach for your phone and start scrolling through Instagram or YouTube or start scrolling through a, a different feed of some kind. Whenever you feel that impulse come up, become conscious of it and then override it, or in other words, don't allow yourself to follow that impulse. Now, this is very, very powerful, okay? The more that you train yourself to override and not follow these impulses as they come up, the more the mind actually stops being impulsive. And so you're kind of like uh, ripping out a weed by the root. These, these impulsive uh, weeds in the garden, you're ripping them out by the root so that they can't multiply. And Another way that this may come up is like a very simple one that we've shared in the past is when you wake up in the morning, win the very first impulse test, which is not to roll over and turn on your phone and start scrolling through Instagram or whatever the case may be, looking at texts and so on. Override that impulse first thing in the morning. And then as you go throughout your day and an impulse comes up, oh, I want to eat that piece of chocolate or I want to watch an extra episode of this TV show, even though I've got stuff to do or whatever the case may be, whenever your mind wants to grip onto one of these impulsive desires, override that impulse and don't do it. What you'll find is an incredible amount of mental power and strength building in your system just as you move throughout the day. You don't have to do anything extra. This is actually taking uh, or giving time back to you. You don't have to do an extra workout or an extra meditation session or anything like that. You're actually, by not following these impulses, adding more time and more energy to your day but you're also training your mind in a powerful way in the process. When you do this, when you step on the basketball court, your mind will be so uh, so much less inclined to follow every little impulse. What is my coach thinking? What's the person in the stand saying about me? What are my teammates gonna say if I take this shot? Your mind is not going to follow these little trails of thought, these impulses that come up because you've ripped out impulse by the root. So. Train yourself to do this. Override impulse when you get the chance. Um, it can be something very simple if you're like, <laughs> this is kind of a graphic uh, description, but like so many players that I work with, this comes up where every single time that um, they go to the bathroom, they're on their phone and they're like scrolling through Instagram. Every time that they're in the car, rather than just like sitting quietly or talking with somebody that they're with or whatever the case may be, if they're on the bus somewhere, they're on their phone scrolling. Resist the impulse when it comes up. Now, if there is an impulse that um, you do wanna follow, and for whatever reason, this is just one to follow, right? Your um, impulse is telling you to like text this person back and you suddenly reach for your phone. One thing that you can do if you're going to fulfill that impulse is to delay the impulse, okay? So when you find yourself reaching for that phone, just pause a moment for about five seconds or so. Let the impulse, the feeling of that like gripping on and fulfilling the impulse, let that die down and settle. And then consciously by choice, fulfill what 
uh, whatever action that impulse was directing you towards. This is still going to train your mind. Just by overriding that impulse for a few moments, that can make a huge, huge difference. You're delaying the desire for something and the satisfaction of that desire. And this is going to build up a huge amount of mental strength and that override, the capacity to override these impulses. Um, another one that is coming to mind right now, I was with a friend of mine recently and we were watching a TV show and they said that like, oh, turn on another episode. And I was, I was thinking like, oh no, I, I've had enough of this. And so I said, like, all you have to do actually, when you are binge watching something, all you have to do when you get that urge, that impulse to watch an extra episode is just wait, wait a minute, wait two minutes, wait three minutes. That's all. Just wait and watch what happens. Your mind settles down, the impulse dies off. It's like a tight muscle that finally relaxes. And after a few minutes, you no longer really wanna watch that show. You, you don't wanna watch that extra episode. And it's incredible to see how impulsive our mind really is and how we're going throughout our days most often, like following every little impulse and what happens when we start to override these impulses, we come to this, this point of stillness in our mind that you can't get to otherwise. And it's sort of like impulse is the um, wind that's like making the water choppy. And when the wind is removed, the water becomes still. All right, so try this out. Uh, make sure that you're practicing this on a daily basis, either override the impulse or if you're gonna fulfill the impulse, just wait a moment, okay? Wait a moment, let the Im that impulse die down and then fulfill that activity if you're going to. And this will go, uh, this will work wonders for your mastery of the law of presence and pretty much every law in the deep game. Hey, it's Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is to head over to deepgame.com and join us in our free masterclass. Now, this is where you'll learn all eight laws of the deep game and all of the fundamentals that you need to know about the part of basketball that's played with the mind. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives, and it's completely free right now. So head over to deepgame.com to join us, and I will see you.